So welcome back uh, to part three of today's lecture on uh, bases. The next part that we're going to be talking about is what's called the spanning SAT theorem. And I've actually written out the whole theorem here. And, but I'll walk you through about what's going on. So this is what you have to imagine, that you're given a set of vectors uh, in V. And we know that in H, let H be the space spanned by all of those vectors. OK, so have that in your mind. And what this is saying is, well, let's say that there's some guy in your set, S, that's a linear combination of the remaining vectors. Then what you can do is that if you pop that vector VK out, OK, so if you take that set formed by removing VK, then whatever is still left over actually will still span. So in some ways, you have redundant information here. If one of the elements inside of S is a combination of the others, you can throw it out and you won't destroy the size of the set that it spans. And then the second property is, as long as you're not with the empty set, then once you have a set that spans, there's a subset that is actually a basis. So what it means is you can keep kind of popping things out. If, if it's a linear combination of something, you can throw it away. And you get down to the case where no vector is a linear combination of the other, and what's left over is the basis for H. Okay? And so let me just kind of give you away the big idea here without going into the proof. Right? So what, how should you think about this theorem? All right? Well, what it's telling us is that a basis is an efficient way and let me I kind of scribble that, so I'll try that again. Efficient way to describe H. Okay, so it's efficient in the sense that you have a, a collection of vectors and you're getting rid of vectors that don't actually give you any information, right? So it's the smallest number. A basis is the smallest number of vectors needed to span H. So it's the smallest number of vectors that you need in order to describe everything inside of H. At the same time, why a basis is efficient is that it's also the largest number of vectors that is linearly independent. So we're kind of doing two things at the same time. We're trying to make the largest set of, a set of vectors that are linearly independent, but at the same time, we want to pick the smallest numbers in order to span your whole set. And a basis is kind of, kind of sits at this intersection of this kind of fighting uh, ideas. Um, and so it's the efficient way of describing your vector space. Okay, so let, let's me just give you an example of the spanning set theorem using our previous example right here. So we're going to build upon that one. So we saw if we take H to be the span of these vectors by the above, the, the vectors inside of here are not linearly independent. Now we didn't go and figure out a linear dependence relation, but I did it. And I can tell you that actually the last vector or polynomial in this case, is a combination of the first two. And here it is. It's twice the first polynomial plus minus one times the second polynomial. Okay, so the spanning theorem says, well, this guy is a combination of these two. So I, this, in some ways I can remove this polyno polynomial and the spanning set will not change. So by the theorem, the spanning set of H is also equal to the spanning set, oops, let me clean this up, the spanning set of these two polynomials. Okay. And actually we can go a little bit further okay, in the following sense. Since one minus T plus four T squared is not a multiple of one minus three t plus two t squared, right? That should be clear. I can't multiply the second, the first polynomial by anything and get the second polynomial. Uh, they're linearly independent. 
they are linearly independent. So this is a basis for H. Okay, so this is actually an example of the second part of the spanning theorem, that you can just keep throwing away things and then eventually you will get to a basis of your vector space. Sorry about that, I got a little squished into the bottom, but hopefully you can read all of that okay. So that's the spanning set theorem, it's very handy. Again, just, just to reiterate how we, we normally use it is we just kind of start with a whole bunch of vectors that span our set, and then we can just remove things that are linear combinations. And at some point, we're going to remove enough to get a basis for H. And that's the idea of the smallest number to span. So in the next part of this lecture, we're going to talk about looking at bases of specific vector spaces okay, uh, that we've seen already in this course. Okay, see you in the next part.